Amen. So why don't you stand with me and let's welcome the man of God, Nathan Salter, to minister to us. Check me too. How's everybody doing? It's so good to be here at Singles Fest 2012. Amen. I'm really excited. I thank God for Miss Marlene and Tom inviting me to come out. And how many of y'all ready to really get some good teaching? Okay. This is going to, you can have your seat. I'm going to try to do this in an hour. It's going to be so good. That um, And this is stuff that we've been sharing all over the world, really, and it has really opened up the eyes of a lot of single people. Um, many have asked, am I single? Yes, I am still single, never been married, and I am single with a purpose. Ooh, I got quiet. <laughs> That's why I'm so happy. <laughs> if I didn't have a purpose, I would be like, what, I'm getting married? But purpose deflects loneliness. Mm. I hope y'all ready for this. This is going to get good. Real quick, before I get started, with the show of hands, how many of you are desiring to get married? That's 90%. How many of you do not want to get married at all? Just one. <laughs> You're going to get blessed by this too as well. Well, for those who are desiring, I am desiring myself, but I'm not in no rush. Because I want it to be God's timing, God's pick, God's everything. <laughs> the theme scripture that, um, that's, that, we, that we're coming off of is, is, is um, Proverbs chapter 3, which many of you have known this scripture. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Y'all know that scripture, right? Okay. All right. Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready to eat? <laughs> Not natural food, spiritual food. <laughs> Some of y'all started digging in your bag, getting them chata chips. Not that <laughs> Oh, Lord, let me clear this up. <laughs> Some of y'all was like, thank you, I can go to Chops. No. All right, but listen, let me start with this. Let me tell you a little bit about God's design for singleness. All right, many, did any of you brought your Bibles with you? Okay. If you don't have your Bibles, if, if we can, um, I'm, do you have the scripture where we can put uh, Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 2 up, up on the screen if you have it. If not, I'll, I can read it. Trust in the Lord all thy heart. That's Proverbs. And I'm going to tie it in with Genesis because this, is a, this has been something that has changed my life. As you're turning to that and as we're getting Genesis chapter 2 set, I want to first off and say this to you, that all of you in here are single for a purpose. If you can find out what that purpose is, it will graduate you to the next season, which is called marriage. God is actually blessing you by not letting you be married right now. And there's a reason why he don't have you married yet. That is why we are here together to find out why am I still in this season called singleness. So as we're still getting this, getting everything together, let me give you a good picture. Um, when a child is born, he's in the womb of his mother for nine months. When that child is, is first in, in, um, comes inside the mother's womb, he starts off at a real small stage and then it just starts growing and growing and growing. And something happens around the ninth month. The child gets to a stage where he can't stay in the same season no more. And guess what? It ushers him into another season called life on this side. So in every child has a nine month, about a nine-month season to complete before they come on this side. Every human being has to go through the season of singleness before they get married. Raise your hand if you have ever, ever seen two little babies come out of wombs and get married right then. <laughs> Never go have it. Everybody goes through this wonderful season called singleness. Some people go through it successfully, and some people go through kicking and screaming. 
Let me show you the two because you may be in lane A or lane B. I pray you're going to be in lane, which one was the A? <laughs> I didn't want to curse them. Lane A is you're doing it the right way. Lane B, you, your whole life, every day in the morning, you're saying, win, 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 win. That's your whole prayer. Win, 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 win. And that's why God's saying, no, 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 no. Because you're not even concerned about his will. You're so concerned about my needs. I need somebody to hold me. I need somebody to go to the movies with. And God said, that's why you're by yourself. Because you did not enjoy me yet. So what he does is he says, enjoy me in this season. Get so full of me in this season that you get so maximized that you have to go into somebody else's life and bless them. Wow. And you know how we had a reverse. I need somebody to come and fix me. God said, oh no. So I'm going to take the young lady right here. Let's just say that I am very happy, happy-go-lucky guy. Love God, love the Lord, and I love the work of the Lord. And let's just say she's depressed. She don't like herself. She just... You know, she just wants somebody. She just needs somebody. She complains. Everybody who comes in her life, she just rejects them and she beats them up with her words. And she had a negative upbringing and can't love nobody, can't even love herself. God, I was asking God to bless me, right? I come into her life. God is like, now you may have heard this scripture before. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. You've heard that, right? Now, take the first part of that. Be not unequally yoked. Even with a believer. Just because me and her are saved don't mean we're compatible. This is where a lot of single Christians miss it. Guy get out of jail. Just, he killed 20 people. Served 20 years in prison. Still don't know who Jesus is. Gets out of jail. Come to church. Gets saved. And she says, that's my husband! I want him. I want him. I want him. He's mine. The guy don't even know Jesus yet. You've been saved all your life, keeping yourself clean and pure, and you snatch the first guy who don't even know the God you serve. And then we get married, drag him. <laughs> you go go to church with me and be saved. And now the marriage life is frustrated, and you're saying, God, why? What happened here? It was. It was something just simple. Is you basically hooked up with an unyoked, you were unequally yoked with a believer that you thought that you can change. Uh-oh. Now, I have a lot of marriage mentors. I have a lot of married couples who, who I go to for advice to get insight. And one of the number one things they say, y'all probably want to write this down because this, this, this should stay in the mind of every single person. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60. It is true. When you get somebody... You cannot change that person. That is the deepest revelation that I think every single person needs to have. What you see is what you're going to get. And stop speaking in tongues over it. Stop going on a fast over it. They are, if they are stubborn coming in. <laughs> and, and we think we got this anointing to change it. And so many single people get frustrated. Now you can understand why the divorce rate goes so high. Because of false expectation. Let me take you to Genesis real quick. And let me just show you a little something. Because we have a good number of men in here, a good number of women in here. So this is going to help us both. Genesis chapter 2 talks a little bit about how um, God basically form, make Adam and give him some responsibilities. But I want to start at verse 7. Of chapter 2. It says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, sisters, I want you to open up your ears because I'm about to talk to the men for a second. So, this should bless you about the man that you're going to get. Before, and I know y'all probably heard this before, but before she even came into picture, there was no woman right here. He was, this was strictly God and Adam. The first thing God did 
after he formed him, was not give him a wife. The first thing he did was he placed him in a garden to take care of the area that God owns. I hope this don't get too deep for you. So you have a lot of women who get a man who don't have a garden. Think about this. The reason why he made Eve was to give him help in what he was already doing. If the man don't have nothing to do, why would he need help? <laughs> Lord, help me. There's some stuff I can do by myself. Then there's stuff that I need help. And God said it is not good for him to be alone because he has so much. He, I blessed him with so much here. I've placed the man that I formed and I put him in the garden to take care of it. All this took place before Eve come to place. He tells Adam, I want you to name the animals. I want you to take care of this. He gives the man responsibility. He gives him a job. Everybody say a job. Men, we need to work. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every man needs a garden. This is why women get frustrated because women get married to men who don't have a garden. And the women come in with all this energy to help, but they don't know what to help. So, he puts them in the garden. The man has some responsibility. The man is so fulfilled with him and Jesus, him and the Lord, him and God, all by himself. The man was so fulfilled that he didn't even know he needed a wife. Mm, where are the brothers at? If we are all the time, God, I need a wife, 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 I can't make it without a wife, I need a wife, I need a wife. Then we have not tapped into the fulfillment of Christ yet. There was a season in my life, I will admit, in my 20s, I, all I thought about was I want to get married. God, I need, I want to get married. I'm tired of being alone. I want to get married. And the more I said it, the longer it took. <laughs> and then when it, something happened, God began to show me what my garden was. He began to put songs inside me. He began to put dreams inside me. He began to put visions inside me to record music, to travel, to speak his word. Then all of a sudden, I stopped thinking about dating. I was like, I didn't have time for it. Though people may have asked, I didn't have time. I, didn't, I was so focused on enjoying all the work God had given me. So the funny thing about this story is that God literally had to interrupt Adam. He had to actually say, I got to slow this guy down to bless him. <laughs> so he puts him to sleep. Oh, God. That's when you know you are walking in fulfillment. When God has to slow you down and say, whoa, 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 take a break for a second. You've done so well. Go on vacation and take a nap. And while you're sleeping, he, worked, he got your rib. And your beautiful wife just being worked on. And all of a sudden, he brings her to him. That's why people ask me all the time. People say to me all the time, you know, you need to go out and find your wife. I'm like, oh, that ain't my job. Scripture says, he that find a wife find a good thing. Let me show you. I always do this analogy, and it always helps a lot of people. Okay, here I have, a, uh, I'm, I have some money, right? And let's say I put this money right there. Okay. Now, the piano... The piano is God's purpose for me, okay? My job is to walk over to the piano and to fulfill my assignment. So as I'm walking to the piano, I look and say, oh, wow, look at this blessing. This is he who finds a wife, not he who turn away from the purposes of God and start going fishing. And that's where a lot of men mess it. To get church. I'm about to go to the club and snatch me somebody. <laughs> I need a wife, Jesus. I gotta I just I'm just gonna ask the first girl I see that the first girl that walked through the door, that's my wife. And you forgot your purpose, you leave you totally got all focus. So guess what? God says, if you keep your focus on on your purpose, I'm gonna put her in your path. Acknowledge me in all my ways, and I will direct your path. Is this making sense? So, don't, brothers, from this day forth, the thing you need to seek is God's purpose. 
Inside every man in this room is a garden. You have a business. You have a ministry. You have something that God is going to bless you with. That's why she's coming into your life. And I hope this encourages you, sisters, because I know I have been raised with three sisters and three brothers, so I've been blessed to be exposed to women and how y'all think. <laughs> and to live with y'all. Hallelujah. <laughs> to share bathrooms with you. I know it. I know the mindset, and a lot of men don't know how women think, and that's our problem. So, we actually tell God, Lord, I'm tired of looking at your purpose. I'm about to go find this wife, because I ain't going to be able to find her if, if I don't go look. And God says, just keep looking straight. I got some directions to get here. This is the first time I've, I've went, been this part of Canada. And all I had to do was follow the instructions to get here. Now, on my way here, there was a lot of exits. <laughs> there was a lot of exits. But if I would have just stayed with what was laid out for me, guess what? I got here at, what, 1140? I was shocked. I, I told Ms. Marlene, I was like, man, I got here early. But what we do is we get on the expressway, throw the list away, and say, I think I'm going to just go trust my spirit to get me there. <laughs> and we get off at the first exit. No, no, and that takes us somewhere we don't even need to be. So let me help somebody out in here who may be dating somebody that ain't your husband. The person you with, or the person you trying to see if, if things will work out, that person could be taking you down the exit that God didn't attend. Mm -hmm. And the person God had for you is on this side, and you going that way. Driving, and, and you driving and smiling, too. <laughs> you just smiling. And that guy is taking you, or that woman is taking you this way. And God's divine blessing for you is sitting right here saying, I'm on the path. I'm on the path God laid. And God, it's so funny. Okay, okay, maybe. I told you this is going to get good. Wait till the afternoon session. This will be a bit better. Now watch this. He says in verse 15, And the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. So the reason why God gives a responsibility to the man is because God says, Listen, I'm not giving you the responsibility because you, you're supposed to be, you know, when it says head and head of the home, it don't mean that he's going to be beating all over you. And all that. It don't, it, it, he's the one that's giving him the responsibility. So he's basically saying, God says, let me give him all this responsibility. So basically when I bring her to him, he's going to be clear on where they're going. I put something up on Twitter last night. <laughs> How many women in here, if I was blind as a bat, I mean, really, if I could not see and I was walking around could, trying to hold on to stuff. If I walked up to you and said, um, I want to take everybody here to, uh, what's one of y'all amusement parks out here that y'all? Oh, Canada's Wonderland. Yeah, I haven't been there in years. Wow. Okay. If I wanted to take all y'all to Canada's Wonderland on the bus and I wanted to drive, <laughs> would you get in my bus? <laughs> I feel hurt. None of y'all would get in my bus. Now, you, I'm blind as a bat, but look, at, but look at my heart. Look at the heart. You know how we say that. Look at this heart. He has a nice heart. And I'm willing to pay. You, don't, you still won't get on my bus? Now, somebody tell me why. <laughs> That's an easy revelation, isn't it? <laughs> so why when we meet somebody, women, the first thing you need to ask them is, can you see? Not physically. Did God show you anything spiritually? What did your garden look like? This is going to help you know if you're the one for him. Because if he says, God has blessed me with my own boutique. And if you know that ain't what God put in you, you like, nope, wrong garden to help. <laughs> Do I hope this is making sense to you. Because so many people are spiritualizing stuff that God says, just be, don't be silly. This, so you get a person who's in this type of ministry, you get a person in that type of ministry, totally going two different directions, and they try to come together and make it work. God says, listen, I'm giving y'all one garden. 
And we have people splitting up. So I, I threw you in the future a little bit so you can see it. I'm going to give you four quick words. Let me give you four quick words. Write these words down if you get a chance. Assignment, purpose, course, and I'm gonna, I'll repeat it again, and destination. Assignment, course, purpose, and destination. All of us in here have an assignment. Women and men, you both have an assignment. Our job is to find out what is the instructions God has given you. All of this is going to make a lot of sense of who the person you're going to be with. This is what helped me to say, that ain't her, that ain't her, that ain't her. She may be pretty, but that ain't her. It's because of these four words. And if it's work for me and it's work for some other singles, I believe it's going to definitely be a blessing to you. Okay? Assignment. God has an assignment. Assignment is some specific instructions that you have to do. So, an assignment is, God may say, like, think of school. They may give you a homework assignment. Your homework assignment is to read three pages, and you've got to write a paragraph. That's called an assignment. It's specific instructions. You don't have to do no more or no less. Your assignment may be, I need you to be at Cross Point Ministry. Your assignment may be, I need you to sit under this pastor. Your assignment may be, I need you to serve in this particular ministry. Everybody understand that? Because all of that is preparing you about for the path that your blessing is on. All right, so we got assignment. The next one is course. Course is the direction to the assignment. Everyone in here, you have a course. You cannot get off course because your blessings is already laid on the course before you even get on the course. So I'm going to jump out and say that the husband that you've been praying for, the wife you've been praying for, is waiting on a path for you to get there. And the only way you get there is if you stay on course. Look at your neighbor and say, stay on course. So when I, when I told you, when I, now the thing about course that I love, on my way here, it is impossible for me to drive from Buffalo, New York, all the way here without seeing a gas station or a service station. Would y'all agree? Before I even jumped on the QEW, there was already things placed before I even started driving. So when God looks at you, remember we, we sung the song, He Knows My Name? He already, he already knew who you are. He said, okay, this particular person, I, know, I already know what kind of person she wants. I already know what kind of person he wants. So this is what I'm going to do. This person is way across in East Jahanga somewhere. Don't even know that this person exists. He over there cutting down bananas or something. And you over here, you know, mopping and cleaning or whatever. And while he over cutting on bananas, he don't, he, don't, he don't even know how to speak English, French, whatever. And whatever reason, you have to get to a certain place. God gives, us, gives you an assignment to do something. And while you're doing your assignment, God gives him an assignment to do something. And all of a sudden, y'all both meet in Brampton, not knowing that he was being told to go this way. You was being told to go this way. He was coming and thinking, I'm just coming to Singles Fest just to get a, get a word. And she's coming, I'm coming to Singles Fest to get a word. And y'all both walk across and path each other and look at each other and say, look at God. <laughs> look what God has done. <laughs> these are, these, God is orchestrating stuff whether you believe it or not. Why you here right now, the person that God is intent, has intended in his mind for you is already living. They're breathing. They're at work right now, possibly. They're watching TV right now at home. They're probably on their knees praying for the type of person with your type of personality. So let me, let me I'll be safe to tell you this. You prob, the thing that you hate about yourself is the thing that person probably praying that they want. You in the mirror like, God, my hair is just so, ugh. I hate this straight hair. And he on his knees, Lord, I just love straight hair. <laughs> God ain't up there like he ain't up there confused 
What did he say in, in Psalms 37, 37 verse 4? He says, if you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Get out your mind. God will give you somebody with no teeth and no ears and no, no, no lips and stuff. Get that mess out of your mind. God wants you to be happy. Look at your neighbor and say, he wants you to be happy. <laughs> we got this thing in our mind that when God bless you, they go come in all rolling and, you know, you shouldn't be able to look at the person and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thanks. Oh, this is not to do. I'm serious. How many of y'all want to, don't you want to be able to kiss the person, when you kiss the person that you married to, don't you want to be happy to kiss them? You don't want to be like, Father, give me the strength. I need your anointing. I need your power to kiss my husband. That's just too much spirituality. You should be able to look at them and say, thank you, God. You have blessed them. They are fearfully and wonderfully made. And they should look at you the same way. So if people tell you, just look at their heart, yes, definitely look at their heart. But we have eyes too. <laughs> you don't want to have to go to fast just to hug them. You know, you want to be excited to hold their hand. You don't, oh, Lord, I hope this ain't too deep for y'all. Because I don't know about y'all, but I am not believing God for just something. All these blessed people, and you mean to tell me God just go pick the, the, the least the least one I like, and say, I'm going to make you like her. <laughs> He's like, no, no, I'll give you the desire to heart, but you got to delight yourself in me because remember, remember, the ultimate goal is not my marriage. And I'm going to explain this. Your ultimate goal is God's purpose. The marriage is a covenant relationship that helps fulfill the purpose. So you have a lot of singles who all they want to do is get married. That's why you're not married. I'm telling you the truth. Because marriage is not your end. Because when that person died, guess, who, what, guess what you got to do? Keep living. And back in my 20s, I thought marriage was it. If I get married, I'm the happiest man on earth. And God said, that's why you're not married. Be happy single first. Because you can't give what you don't have. If you're angry, that's the only thing you're going to be able to give to your spouse is anger. If you're joyful, that person is getting blessed. Because you only can give the person what you have. If you don't, have, if you don't love yourself, that person is in trouble. Because the scripture says, love thy neighbor as... So how can you love them if you don't love you? This is not too deep for y'all, is it? Are y'all being helped by this? Okay, good. Now, let me tell you about purpose. And I love this analogy because this sort of wakes a lot of people up. When God made you, he had a plan in mind why you were made with the type of tone, with the type of height, with the type of color. Everything was made, designed by God. He wasn't up there scratching his hand saying, oh, I made this one white. Darn. She was supposed to be black. No, that was, no he, he is not confused. <laughs> Because we think that God, this is sometimes, I have to do this because sometimes people just get this false, you know, they, they, you don't appreciate how you look because you forget that God made you fearfully and wonderfully made. There's a song on my latest album um, out there that's called Fearfully and Wonderfully Made, and it has really un helped people to understand that, listen, you're, God made you the way you are. You were 6'5", you were 6'1", you are 5'5", five five because God made you that height. That was God's original intent. So, Purpose. I'll take this microphone here. I'll show you, I'll use the one I got in my hand. And everybody loved this analogy. Okay, what is the purpose of this microphone? To amplify our voice, you know. Now, you see how quick we was able to find out the purpose of the mic? Now, if I asked you what's your purpose, what would you say? First thing we would say is to worship God. To, you know, every believer should do that. But there's a specific thing you're supposed to do. It's more than I'm just, just to be a Christian. There's a specific thing that only you can do that nobody else in this room can do. This is key because if you are a microphone, this is going to get deep, and you marry a person who is a piano, this is all you go have in your marriage. <laughs> There's no compliment. 
if you marry somebody that's a mic holder, oh, it's making sense now. You see how it just slide right there? The mic holder is happy and the mic is happy because they both were made for each. Come on, give God a hand phrase for that. Now, my question to you is, what are you? So, let me tell you what's happening to 90% of Christian singles. Y'all want to hear this? I have this microphone in my hand, and this is what's happening to 90% of Christians, all ages that I've seen. We look at the microphone, we say, Wow, this, this is a nice little thing. And we go like this. We start brushing our hair with it. And... Was it made for that? You know what I'm doing to this microphone? I'm abusing it. I took something that was made to do something powerful. And I took it and started doing something totally else with it. So if the person who gets you don't know what your purpose is, they're going to abuse you. You're going to be with somebody who don't appreciate who you are. This is the thing that has made me say, Lord, I'm willing to wait. I have refused to be abused. Look at your neighbor and say, I would not be abused. And don't think it's get physical abuse out your mind. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about abuse of purpose. Some of you got some things inside you that can bless so many people, but you have hooked up with the piano. And God, because he's so merciful, he let something sever that relationship, and now you're single again. <laughs> that was God's mercy on you. He was blessing you by making that person drop you. I mean, <laughs> dump you, whatever the best way to put it. I was trying to put it a Christian way, but I guess it didn't work. But... <laughs> So that was God's blessings to you to let that person get up and walk out. Amen. You was like, what happened? God, we were, they were in church, we were worshiping together, and that person just came up and just told you, listen, I can't do this. And, and you was crushed. And God said, I had to do this because you were going to get abused. I have a whole other person for that piano. The person I have for that other individual, they're going to be able to play it. And you in their life is going to frustrate them because they were made to be played. And you were made to be spoken into. This is so good to me. I think I'm going to burn the tape myself. <laughs> it has helped. It has literally helped me to identify if she is not a mic holder, I don't have time going out to the movies with her in the first place. Why even start something that ain't even, God ain't gonna, abracadabra, and, you know, and all of a sudden she doesn't, no, no, no. You, could, you should be able to know it when you meet that person. This is a mic stand, I see it. So when Adam saw Eve, he said, wow, that's bones of my bones. Adam then closes his eyes and says, Father, in the name of Jesus, give me direction. Give me direction. Give me direction. Who is this woman walking towards me? Who is this woman walking towards me? I think she said. I... He just looked right at her and said, that's bone of my bones. It was that clear. Why is it so hard for us? You know why it's so hard for us? Because we don't know that we're microphones. We don't know who we are. So we're just walking around. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. But don't know what you love Jesus for. <laughs> and why God called you. You are more than just lifting up your hands. I'm telling you that. You are more than just coming to church every Sunday. You are supposed to be changing somebody's life every day. And God says, if you can do that for me, guess what? I'm going to give you help while you're doing it. But if you're not doing that, what am I going to give you help for? I am, God is not a, God, you know one thing God hates? He hates lazy people. It's a script. God hates slothfulness. If you don't believe it, read Matthew 25. With the, with the parable with the talents. And the first two, the one who got the five, the one who got the two, they went and did something with it. He was happy. Then the one who got it, he buried it. The thing he gave him, he buried it. God says, 
He, he didn't go up to him and say, my wonderful son, I still love you and I died on the cross for you. He called him a wicked and slothful servant. That was, a, that, was the, that was the speech of God. What I'm trying to say, God, the thing that's going to please God the most is for you to fulfill the thing that he's put inside you. So singles all in this room, singles all of this world is starting to realize, wait a minute. I was looking at marriage the wrong way. I was looking at marriage just to have somebody to hold me. I was looking at marriage just to have somebody to go to the movies with. I was looking at marriage just to have a friend to talk to. Now people are starting to realize I'm looking to get married so I can multiply and be fruitful with the stuff that God put inside me. So my question to you, oh God, time went too fast. Okay, my question for you is what do you have to multiply? If God blessed you this week with your Boaz or your Ruth, what would they be helping you do? Let's take 20 seconds and think about that. If the only thing that they can help you do is have sex, because eh, when the sex is over, y'all still got to live. So that 20-minute experience ain't going to fix your problem, I'm telling you. So you got a lot of people, I'm going to get married because I just burn into my flesh. Okay, you go have you go have a hard life when you say I do. And you thinking, oh, we're going to have sex all day long, and we just go, and, and anytime I want it, they go, what? As soon as you get married, the other person say, you a night person, and they a day person. <laughs> you messed up. Because they want to they wanna wake you up at 2 in the morning, and that's the time you like to sleep. What do you do then? <laughs> it's the stuff that you got to think about. Because you think, oh, we're going to just get married, and everything's going to go perfect. And what happens when the reality kicks in? So if sex is the only thing that, that's making you want to get married, I'm going to tell you right now, just listen, just take your, listen, Lord, give, ask God to give you the grace and the strength to maintain and to abstain until marriage. But do not do it because of that. Get married because you see purpose. Every day, every day I get up and I say, Lord, I want to fulfill your purpose every day. I want to fulfill your purpose. So every friend that comes in your life, everything, this afternoon, we're going to talk about something so good that's going to really bless you. But every day... Things are being set up because God has a plan. He has a purpose and you are fulfilling it. And he is not going to give you somebody that's going to abuse you. And the person that you're probably looking at right now to be your potential, that person don't even know it. You, you've already claimed it. <laughs> you've already said, Lord, that's my husband, that's my wife. And they don't even know it. But that's my husband, that's my wife. That person don't have a clue that who you is. That person... Could, God is like, I'm not even going to show that person you. Because if I do, you're going to try to fix things and do it my way. Do it your way and just butcher the whole thing. And if that person is for you, guess what? God has a way of letting y'all two cross paths and bam. And guess what? Please, please, please do not get caught up with this one-sided, the Lord told me stuff. The Lord done showed me that that's my man. And you ask him, he like, the Lord done show me to run from that one. <laughs> that ain't God. God don't work that way. <laughs> Lord, that's my wife. I don't care. She going to know it. Sooner or later, she going to know that I'm her wife. I'm her husband. I, she going she to marry me. That is God ain't like, going to work like that, y'all. They both, it should be a, a compliment. It should both be a confirmation. The God in me and the God in her should be like, bam. But you know, we, we, I don't know what it is about the generation. We have gotten to the point we don't trust God no more. That's why Proverbs 3 is so key. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Because your heart will deceive you, y'all. I'm serious. You will see somebody look attractive and you're like, God, that's the, thank you, Jesus. That's the one I want. They save and God knows don't let them lift up their hands in church. You know, you're like, oh, they lifted their hands. They, they, they're anointed. Oh, I want them now. And you marry the guy. He, was, he lifted up his hands because he was stretching. And you thought he was a worshiper. <laughs> he was like this in church. Oh, you was like, oh, Jesus, I want help. He's a worshiper. <laughs> so now you're at home stuck with a man who stretched. And you thought all that time. <laughs> you thought all that time. 
That's why you can't get caught up with, or God has a way of, of, of confirming certain things to you. So I, I, I'm, I'm sort of tempted to dive into what I'm going to talk about in the, in the afternoon session, but I'm going to try to slow it down so we can um, end for the lunch break on time. But I really want these four words, um, and I, I still have one more, the destination. Destination is the end result to why God made you. My destination today was Brampton, Ontario. You understand that? So when I, I got my assignment from Miss Marlene, I got my course, which was take this route to that route to this route. And my destination was 444 Steel Avenue. That's simple, right? West. Oh, West, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. So, so, now, but I didn't have all that without a purpose. You see what I'm trying to say? The purpose was the thing that gave me the assignment, the destination, and the course. You understand that? If I didn't have a purpose, I wouldn't need to be on MapQuest. So what am I saying? If you don't have a purpose for your life, there's no need for you to get married. So you're to butcher somebody else's life? God is looking for multiplication. He's looking for, I want to bless you so we can multiply. So remember in, in Genesis 1, he says, be fruitful and multiply. He was speaking about, also, yes, he was talking about as far as children, but he's talking about multiply and replenish. He wants us to dominate. He wants us, he wants his kingdom to be here on earth. He wants people to see his reflection between the husband and the wife. So he says, before I do this, I need to make sure that they are compatible so they can rule each other, effect, rule the garden that they have effectively. I'd rather them rule effectively than kill each other. Because if you hook up with anybody, instead of ruling, you're going to kill each other. And then get in the car and get to church and say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, our marriage blessed. And you get in the car, you guys are like about to knock each other out all the way home. And then you get to church again and you sit next to each other and start, you know, I had, I had the privilege, I had the privilege of sitting in the car with a couple one time of uh, very um, good friends of mine. They don't mind me sharing that. I tell them all the time that their life has blessed me. And they're very transparent, beautiful marriage. But, and I think what made it beautiful is that they're so transparent. They don't, they're not fake. They ain't the type that only lets you see when, when, they, every, when they are in the grants. So they had a little argument one time when I was in the car. And I felt a little uncomfortable because I'm like, this, you know, I don't feel right, you know, sitting in the back seat. They're going back and forth. And I, as, as I'm in the back seat, I'm young, as I'm in the back seat, I was looking and noticing that they were, they were God was using them to show me what it's really like. When you love someone. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this afternoon. I had to see that, because a lot of, sometimes, us single people, we get this false perspective that you're not going to have no arguments. <laughs> see, they could, they, see they, there's a wisdom over here. I could, I, <laughs> they could definitely say, he's, <laughs> you're going to have arguments, disagreements, agreements. There's going to be times, listen, you're going to be like, Lord, I've heard, I've heard some awesome people, even though they, because they know the purposes, there's been times, you know, sometimes they had to stay apart for a day or two just to calm down. And, I've, you know, I've, 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 I've had more of appreciation now for what it's really like. So it has helped me to prepare for the realistic perspective of marriage. As opposed to this, oh, we both going to be walking down the park. You know, picking flowers in the afternoon. Listen. <laughs> if it was that easy, we wouldn't have almost a 60% divorce rate, y'all, in the church. Not in the world. Almost 60. That's let you know that you have microphones and pianos hooking up every day. Now, the thing about the microphone and piano I've got to leave you with on this first half is that, is this microphone and this piano, is it in the same building? It's in the same building, right? That's just like singles being in the same church. It still don't mean that they're compatible. Just because you go to the church with somebody and uh, you see another single person in your church, it don't mean that they're the person. God's blessing for you may not be at your church. They may have, like I said, they may come from East West Jahanga somewhere. 
and, and, you know, and come and find you at a, you could be walking through the supermarket, hair all nappy, <laughs> just walking with your sweatpants on, don't even, and you just sitting there, and all of a sudden a box of Cheerios fall off, and he didn't want to pick it up for you. And it'd be something that quick and small. And God, that's why he says, always acknowledge him because he'll direct your path. And sometimes it always happens when you're not preparing. That's what everybody has shared. Most people who have got connected God's way, most times they have met the person when they least suspected it. So if you have it on your agenda, <laughs> June 9th, I'm meeting my husband. Most likely you ain't going to meet him today because <laughs> that's your agenda. It's going to happen when you're just Floating in purpose. You may be in worship. I heard a good friend of mine. He's a recording artist. I won't share his name on the tape, but he cracks me up. Uh, you know him. You listen to his music. And he, uh, he was on stage ministering in purpose. His purpose was to go out and bless people through worship. So he's on stage ministering. You know, I may give him away when I do this. Well, he's playing. He plays a guitar. We, we actually listened to one of his songs this morning. All right. So he's on stage and he's playing the guitar, and he's looking out, and he's just playing. And all of a sudden, in the worship service, he's just going in, just seeking after the face of the Lord. He said he opened up his eyes, and he saw the most beautiful woman on the front row <laughs> Why he's in worship service. And he said when he saw her, he began to stutter. <laughs> he was like, a, 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 in the middle of, of a worship concert. <laughs> and he said it was that impactful. It was almost like he heard it in the middle. When he looked at her, he said, that's her. It was like Eve popped up. And, that, and they're married today and been married for years and have a beautiful relationship. But what am I saying? He didn't go on stage to talk about, come on, everybody, let's worship. Come on, let's worship. <laughs> he wasn't like that. He went on stage and was, had his focus on God. While his eyes was closed, he would sleep like Adam. And when he opened up his eyes... Eve was sitting right there. I know, that's so, everybody say, aww. That's so, that's so, I know, you're like, Lord, is that how it's going to be for me? You know? <laughs> but seriously, that's what God got, listen, God is going to hook you up. If that's your desire, God knows how to have you and that person. But the problem I see most singles have is we do not know our purpose. We get to the point where we want marriage more than God. And that's out of balance. When marriage is all you want, and that's all you want, you don't even pray. Your whole prayer life is about marriage and not about how you can be a blessing and how he can use you. You're not ready. When you get to the point where you say, Lord, if I don't get married, I'm happy with you. Lord, I'm willing to just serve you. That's when a lot of times God is like, okay, that's, I, I, I'm ready to bless that one. Every time I've been blessed physically, y'all, it's always been when I got to the point where I didn't care about the blessing. Somebody, but it was one time in my life, and I'm closing on the first half here. One time in my life, as God's my witness, I was, uh, you know, I went through a huge financial drought in my life. Couldn't even have a, I didn't, it's, I was like in my, in my early 20s, and I was working, and I couldn't really afford nothing. And, and I had to drive this old beat-up truck. Just ride this beat-up truck to work. And, you know, and I was complaining about this truck every day. Just complaining because, you know, I didn't want to, you know, before I got saved, I liked the nice things. And I, I felt a little embarrassed driving that Sanford and Son truck. <laughs> when, you drive, when you turn the corner, the door fly open. That's how bad it was. I'm serious. I'm not joking. So I would have to drive, and every time I get to a corner, I would have to hold the door and turn. It would fly wide open. And I, I, at one point, I just got embarrassed, and I'm just like, I'm not driving this truck no more. I'm, I'm, I'm you know. And you know what? It seemed like nothing was happening in my life when I had that attitude. One day, one day in the winter, I walked up, I woke up and I just said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I, you know what? I'm sorry for complaining. This is my blessing. It's getting me from point A to point B. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad. And I began to rejoice over that green <laughs> truck. I was going to call it something else. <laughs> that green truck. I just began to bless God for that truck. And for like two weeks, I started driving it happy. I actually started washing it. 
it had so much rust on it that well, as I was washing it, rust was falling off. But guess what? I just, just started washing it because I was so grateful. And I said, I'm going to treat this like it's my brand new car. And I began to just wash the things, just spray it and wash the wheels and nothing would change. <laughs> you know what? I've been just going to take care of it. So one day I went to work and I, was, I went to work and, and I was sitting there and I was so grateful. I was so full of the joy of the Lord that day. And a gentleman came to me and said, listen, I need you to come with me after work. And I'm like, you know, yeah, no problem. You know, what, you know me and I'm good friends. So he tra- takes me to this car place and says, pick out whatever car you want. And I look at him, I said, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, he may have wanted my advice for um, a car he was getting. He just wanted to get my insight. So I said, I like that one right there. He says, yours. And I looked at him, I said, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I said, what? He said, go ahead. He said, go and test drive it. And I went and drove that car. He wrote, went, went in there and said, went to the guy and said, listen, we want to buy this car. He wrote a full check, paid for it full. Now, in my infant mind, now when I drove that parking lot, drove off that parking lot, I, my face was so wet from tears. I almost got an accident because I couldn't see what all the tears were. Oh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was so blown away at who he used, how he did it, and I wasn't thinking about it. When the scripture says the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich, and he add no sorrow. When God blesses you, there's no sorrow with it. So I had no sorrow for no, no notes. <laughs> All I had to do was pay gas and keep my ch- oil changed. And I drove that car to the grave. I definitely got a new one now, but I drove that car to the grave. It was a beautiful, beautiful brand new car. And what I saw that day was God saying to me, if you just delight, just be grateful for the stage you're in. So you have a lot of singles. I'm tired of being single. I'm tired of being single. You are like me in that green truck. But until you start washing that green truck, until you start rejoicing in your singleness, take your own self on a date. I do it all the time. I go to the movies by myself, y'all. Listen, I be going, I, I walk up in there. I be, I just get my popcorn. I'll be sitting back. I'm like, man, that was good. Y'all see that scene? I be talking to people next to me. They don't even know who I am. <laughs> I do. Why wait? See, most single people talk about, oh, when I get married, we're going to do this. I'm doing it now. I'm traveling now. I'm listening. I want to go skydiving. I'm doing that before I get married. I want to go to Israel. I did that before I got married. I'm like, why wait? That's when you start washing your truck. While you're washing and appreciating that season, God is like, all right, I got somebody who's about to blow your mind. And you just over there so happy, single, and all of a sudden that person come, and you start crying like me. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so blown away. And that's what God is really trying to do. He is trying to hook you up. He, everything you're going through right now is hook up, but your attitude has to be, from this day forth, my life, I will not be frustrated as a single person another day. From this day forth, I am going to have fun. Listen, today, y'all, during fellowship time, I want y'all to meet new people. Listen, have fun today. Smile. Laugh. Hey, you want a frisbee? Yeah. See, I like him. This is what I'm talking about. Listen. See, now, a person who don't like their singleness would be like, I don't know frisbee. What is this going to do for me? Listen, thank, can I keep this? Listen, I love the beach, so I'm going to the beach with this thing. You know, I'm going to find a dog, I'm going to find a dog or rent one, and I'm going to be like, here, Ruffy, <laughs> me and him go have a blast. Because listen, you're only going to bring into your marriage what you've got single. If you're fun single, you're going to be fun married. Marlene, am I telling the truth? If you're depressed single, I'm telling you, forget it. That person, that person can get in the bed and be dancing in front of you like a clown every night, and you're going to be looking at him like, can you please get out the way? <laughs> I, I, just sit down. Just do something. They do all these tricks. And you're sitting there like, oh boy. <laughs> Learn to laugh. Learn to enjoy yourself. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a blessed time. Were y'all blessed with this first session?